this place on this morning, Lord God, to have your way, Father God. Do as only you can do, Father God. Hallelujah. Touch each and every person, Lord God. Hallelujah. You know exactly what is needed, Father God. Heal bodies, Lord God. Hallelujah. Touch minds, O oh God. Hallelujah. And we thank you for that on this morning, Lord God. There are those that wanted to be here, Lord God, but were, for whatever reason could not make it, Lord. You see them right where they are, and you know what is needed, Lord God. Hallelujah. You're not a respecter of persons, oh God, and we praise you for that on this morning, Lord God. We know that you're always watching out for us, Lord God, supplying our every need, oh God, hallelujah, according to your riches, Lord God, hallelujah. And we thank you for that on this morning, Lord, for always being so mindful of us, Lord God, hallelujah. Father, you woke us up this morning. You brought us into this place, Lord God, and we thank you for that on this morning, Lord God, that we may be able to just worship you, Lord God, to come together as one, Lord God, and to worship you, Father God, and we thank you for that on this morning, Lord God, hallelujah. Father God, we pray for little Benjamin on this, on this morning, Lord God, even as a small child, Father God, hallelujah. Father God, we ban, Lord God, hallelujah, the spirit of suicide, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, hallelujah. Father, we cast it down now, Father God, and we speak life, Lord God, hallelujah. Father God, even make Caleb a blessing to him, Lord. As he see him in school, Lord God, let him be able to pray for him, Lord God, to speak a word to him, Lord God, hallelujah, as you give it to him, Father. Let him show his love, Father God, and we thank you for that on today, Lord God. Hallelujah. Father God, we pray for our praise team on this morning, Lord. Help us to join in, Lord. It's not just all about them, Lord, getting up worshiping you. It's about all of us, Lord God, joining in, worshiping you, Father. And we thank you for that on this morning. Even with the band, Lord God, touch them, Lord God. Bless them, Father God. And we thank you, Father, for you are righteous. You are holy. You are the lifter up, up of our heads, oh God, hallelujah. You're Alpha, you're Omega, Lord God. You know the beginning from the end, Lord God, hallelujah. And you have already ordered our steps, oh God. And we're so thankful, we're so grateful, Lord, that we know, oh God, hallelujah, that you want only good for us, Father God and we give you the praise. Now have your way in this place, Lord God. Bless our bishop as he come forth, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, as he travel, Lord God. And cover him, Lord God. Strengthen him, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, in advance for the word, oh God. We thank you for the blessings that you're sending forth, Lord God. A word of healing, a word of power, Lord God. A word that break yokes, Lord God, hallelujah. And we thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the love of God. We thank you, Lord God, that your love is pure, oh God, that it's holy. Lord, that it looks beyond everything that we could do, Father God, and yet love, Father. We give you praise for that on this morning, Lord. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nobody like you, oh God. Nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 The song says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody bless the name of Jesus. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, come on, church. We came to celebrate Jesus today. Come on, one voice. Oh, 
give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is Come on, let's sing it again. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks. Unto the Lord, for He is good. Come yes, on, for He is worthy. For He is worthy, worthy. For He is good. Yes, He is. For He is worthy. He is worthy, worthy. Yeah. For He is good. Yes, Come on, let's lift Him up. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, he is. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let's sing it again. Yes, Come on. Oh, good. give thanks. Sing. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Come on. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For he is worthy. For he is worthy. Yes, he is. Worthy. Yes, he is. For he is good. He is good. Yes, he is For he is good. worthy. For he is worthy. Worthy. Oh. For he is good. Yes, he is Come on, everybody. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. Yes, he Can anybody is good. testify today that God oh, is good? Unto the Lord, for He is good. For He is worthy. For He is worthy. Yes, He is worthy. Oh, He is good. He's good. For He is worthy. He is worthy. Yes, He is worthy. Oh, He is good. One more time. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks. Yeah. Oh, he is good. Let's sing it again. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Has he been good to you? Yes, he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. For he is worthy. For he is worthy. Worthy, oh, he's good. good. For he is worthy. Worthy, worthy. Oh, he is good. For he is worthy. For he is worthy. Worthy. For he is good. Yes, for he is worthy. Worthy, worthy. For he is good. Come on, let the musicians play. Hey! Somebody lift up the name of Jesus. We came to celebrate Jesus today. Hallelujah. We give God the glory. We bless your name, our Lord. Yay! Lord, you've been good. Come on, church. For he is worthy. For he is worthy. Yes, he is worthy. Oh, for he is good. He's good. For he is worthy. He is worthy. Yes, he is worthy. He's good. For he is worthy. For he is worthy. Worthy. For he is good. Come on, put those hands together for Jesus. Worthy. Worthy. Oh, for he is good. Yes, he is. For he is good. He is good. Yes, he is. For he is good. He has been good to you. For he is good. He is good. Yeah. His brand new mercy. He is good. Yeah. For he is good. He is good. Yeah. For he is good. Yes, he is. 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 Y
Forevermore. Come on, can you sing that with us? I call you holy. Come on, sing. I call you holy. Your name? Your name is holy. You are so holy you to me. You are so holy to me. I call, I call you holy. Your name is holy. Holy you are. Holy you are. And holy you be. Holy you be. Yeah. 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 Oh, 
Father, right? And then when we declare those great things, we seal it with a yes. Amen? That means that we believe that, right? Hallelujah. You're a healer. You're a provider. You're a way maker. You're a way out of nowhere. You're a sustainer. You're a keeper. You're a burden bearer. You're a provider, a protector. You're holy. You're righteous. You're sovereign. You're mighty. You're awesome. We exalt you. You're worthy. We extol you. We magnify you. We adore you. We love you. We thank you. Does anybody else feel like praising the Lord this morning or is it just me? Come on, I need you to open up your mouth and give God what's due him. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, open up your mouth. And let the praises fill the room. 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 Yeah. Let the praises fill the room. Let the praises fill the room. Let the praises fill the room. Yes, Lord. Let the praises fill the room. Let the praises fill the room. Open up your mouth. Let the praises fill the room. Let the praises fill the room. Open up your mouth. Let the praises fill the room. Come on, let the praises fill the room. Let the praises fill the room. Hallelujah. Let the praises fill the room. Lord, we love you. Let the praises fill the room. We adore you. Let the praises fill the room. We exalt you. Let the praises fill the room. We magnify you. Let the praises fill the room. Let the praises fill the room. Let the praises fill the room. 
Last week, he's not here, but we were talking about pushing past that comfort zone in worship and how we all have to get past that safety net where we're just like really just halfway doing it. You know what I mean? So when we say let the praises fill the room, that means everybody in the room should be opening up your mouth. And I say, you know, if you want different things, you have to do different things. But we're not worshiping God because we want stuff, though. Like, don't get it twisted. That's not why we worship. We worship God because he's amazing and he's awesome. And if he don't never do nothing else, he's still already done enough. And we, he really don't have to do nothing else for us. He's just God all by himself. He can do anything but fail. He's great. He's mighty. He's wonderful. Does anybody else believe that? Then that's when you have to open up your mouth and say it. You got to open up your mouth, though. You got to open up your mouth. There's one thing to say it in here. But Pastor ha Bishop Hamilton speaks a lot about how the power of life and death is in the tongue. If you say, I'm broke, then you going to be broke. If you say God is blessing me and God is getting ready to restore my finances, then that's what's going to happen. You can think something all day long and your mind is important also. Even if you're thinking the praises, you got to open up your mouth. It's almost like you're not being reprimanded or anything, but it's almost like you're talking to a five-year-old and you're telling them what to do over and over and over again. And they're not understanding why things aren't changing. Well, I don't get why, because you're not doing what God said. And then, you I mean, it's simple. You have to worship. You have to praise the Lord. We're not here for a concert. That's not what this is. We're up here so that we can all get on one accord and believe God together. And that we're all getting on one accord for my situation, your situation. That's what praise and worship is. So come on, everybody lift up your hands. Because at the end of the day, we're going to give God a high praise. But before we even do that, at the end of the day, you already know what to do. I done talked about a Bishop Hamilton and was that. I mean, come on. It's not nothing new. So either you want to do it or you don't. Either you want to praise him or you don't. It's that simple. Does anybody want to bless the Lord? Come on, does anybody really want to bless the Lord? Does anybody know that he's worthy? Come on and lift up your hands and open up your mouth and give God some glory in this place without me telling you what to say, without me telling you what to do. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Yeah, we give you glory. Hallelujah. We give you honor, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your name, oh God. Yes, Lord. We bless your name, oh God. Yeah. My God is worthy. Hallelujah. My God is awesome. Yes. Let the praises fill the room. 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 Exalt your name on high. We exalt your name on high. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We love you. We love you. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Come on, somebody open up your mouth and give God the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah. Come on, open up your mouth. Hallelujah. And let the praises just ring forth. God is amazing. God is awesome. Hallelujah. He deserves our praise. He deserves our worship. He's done so many things for us. Hallelujah. He never overlooked us. As great and as mighty as he is, he still thought enough about us to see our problems and to see our situation and to step in right on time. Hallelujah. You've been a healer. You've been a provider. You've been a protector. Oh, God, I appreciate you. I thank you. You've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good. Yes, Lord. You loose my shackles and you set me free. Yeah. You've been mighty good. Oh, Lord. You've been mighty good. Yeah, Lord. I'm going to tell you something and you may not like it. Aside from me and the praise team, Mother Hamilton, Chandrella, Sister Hamilton, a few other people that really goes forth. I'm not going to wait on nobody no more. I know I said this before and I always revert back to it, trying to push him. But it's hard when you're going through your own thing and you're trying to push somebody else to worship when you know they know already what God brought them out of. I don't know what God brought you out of. I only know what God brought me out of. So I just got to go for what I know. And I'm telling you, I mean it. This time I really mean it. This Sunday and from here on out, I'm going for what I know. I'm not holding back. Look at me crazy. Look at me weird. I do not care. I'm going for what I know. And I suggest that you do the same. Amen. You loose my shackles and you set me free. You've been mighty good. Hallelujah. You've been mighty good. I hear you singing. Come on, everybody. You loose my shackles. You loose my shackles and you set me free. You've been mighty good. You've been mighty good. Come on, just think about where he's brought you from. You've been mighty good. Yeah, come on, say, you lose my shackles. You lose my shackles and you set me free. You've been mighty good. You've been mighty good. You've been mighty good. You've been mighty good. Yeah, I hear you. Come on, everybody, declare it in this place. You lose my shackles and you set me free. Has the Lord been good? Yeah. You've been mighty good. Has the Lord been good? Yeah. Good. Come on, say, you lose my shackles. You lose my shackles and you set me free. You've been mighty good. You've been mighty good. You've been mighty good. Yeah, say, you lose my shackles. Eh? You lose my shackles and you set me free. Whatever that thing is that keeps you bound in You've your mind, good. that keeps you up at night. Come on, declare it. You lose my shackles and you set me free. Everybody say it. Come on, on one accord. You lose my shackles and you set me free. You've been mighty good, yeah. You've been mighty good. You've been mighty good, yeah. You've been mighty good. Yeah, you lose my shackles and you lose my shackles and you set me free. You've been mighty good. You've been mighty good. You've been mighty good. Oh, 
Oh, you've been mighty good. Very easy. Come on, sing it with us. Oh, you've been mighty good. Come on, declare it right now. Oh, you've been mighty good. Say, oh, you've been mighty. Oh, you've been mighty good. Say, oh, you've been mighty. Oh, you've been mighty good. You brought me from a mighty long way. Oh, you've been mighty good. You sealed it and protected me. Oh, you've been mighty good. From the hand of the enemy. Oh, yes, Lord. They just seen it. Oh, hey, my good. God, my God, you covered me. Oh, yes, Lord. Good. You stripped me in your blood, Jesus. Oh, you hey, so that the enemy couldn't attack me. Oh, hey, just when the devil thought he had me. Oh, yes, Lord. Just when the devil thought he had me. Oh, hey, you snatched me from the hand of the enemy. Oh, you my God, 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 you look beyond my faults and say, Oh, you've been mighty good. Oh, you've been mighty good. Hey, you've been mighty good. Oh, you've been You look beyond my faults and you saw my needs. You look beyond my faults because I messed up so many times and you still blessed me and you still covered me and you still protected me and you still brought me out. Even when I didn't deserve it. Now, does anybody else feel that way? Come on, I need you to lift up your hands. And we all gonna get on one accord before Bishop gets up. Come on, everybody, open up your mouth. Yes, come on. Say, oh, you've been mighty. Oh, you've been mighty God. You've been mighty. Oh, you've been mighty God. As you're standing all over the building, do me a favor real quick. Do yourself a favor. Run across the aisle. Go grab somebody and say, he's been mighty good. Come on, take a moment. Uh, come on, tell somebody, he's been mighty good. And some of y'all could have said he's been mighty, mighty good. Mighty, mighty good. God has been mighty, mighty good to us. And sometimes we, we hold back. I heard Sister Ruby talking about that. What would happen if you just completely let go and stop worrying about who's around you? If you stop magnifying all the issues you got and what you haven't got yet and just really praised him with reckless abandon, take a few seconds and give God all the glory you can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha oh, come on, open your mouth. See, some of y'all stop. What you're going to have to understand is your praise and your worship are going to usher you right into your next. Your next blessing, your next level, that's, the Lord said that's what it's going to take. 
Come on, open your mouth, lean your head back, and give God glory. As you grab that hand, go across the aisle. Look at someone and say, you'll feel better if you do. Lord, we bless your name. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Lord, we haven't adequately praised you and worshipped you for who you are and for all that you have done and that all that you are doing for us. Lord, I don't know why we keep holding back. But Lord, from this day forward, every day we're going to thank you. Every day we're going to praise you. Every day we're going to magnify you. Every day we're going to lift you up. Because Lord, you daily load us with blessings. You keep on doing great things for us. And Lord, we thank you. And beside all that, you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There is none like you. There is no other God besides you. You are Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah. And you're worthy to be praised. We worship you, our God. We worship you. Slip those hands up. Everything we need, Lord, is done. In Jesus' name, we receive everything you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hug somebody and tell them I'm so glad to see you. Amen. And uh, chances are that was somebody you already knew, but hug somebody else and tell them I'm glad to see you too. Amen. I'm glad to see each and every one of you. We bless God for you. We bless God for those that are joining us online and uh, on Facebook. Amen. We bless God for all of you that are tuning in. We thank God for all of you that are here in the sanctuary uh, this morning. And uh, give a special shout out, Sister Carla. Today's her birthday. Happy, happy 85th birthday. No, no, I'm sorry. That was, that's, that's, uh, yeah, that might be a little dyslexic. But happy birthday. <laughs> I just got to keep her on her toes. You know what happens when they start having a few birthdays. They get all cocky and arrogant. So you got to every now and then burst, burst her bubble a little bit. But happy birthday to you, and uh, we love you and thank God for you, and amen, amen. It's okay to give God praise. And um, we bless God, and hopefully you'll have a great, great birthday. I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure. I don't know. Anyway, Luke chapter 5, St. Luke chapter 5. And verse number one, and we'll read one through 11. And it's something that I dealt with a couple of years ago, but uh, again, I don't know if there were, you know, there aren't any new scriptures coming along. So I think you have to be able to deal with some things and revisit them because the Lord knows how to bring a word at the right time. And so, Luke chapter 5, in verse number 1, and we'll read 1 through 11. And if you have it, can you say amen? Amen. Be a good neighbor now. If your neighbor doesn't have their Bible, amen, share the word with them. And uh, amen. 
Folks got to declare that they have it. They decree and declare that they have their Bible. Amen. But if they, Luke 5 and 1 reads, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we've toiled all the night and have taken nothing. And you know somebody said, I've been trying. No, y'all ain't say it like you've been trying. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net broke. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. They came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the drought of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. In the Amplified Version, it reads, Now it happened that while Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the Sea of Galilee, with the people crowding all around him and listening to the word of God, that he saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake, but the fishermen had gone, gotten out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, which was Simon and Simon's, and said him, asked him excuse me, to put out a little distance from the shore. And he sat down and began teaching the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon Peter, put out into the deep water and lower your nets for a catch of fish. Simon replied, Master, we worked hard all night to the point of exhaustion and caught nothing in our nets. But at your word, I will do as you say and lower the nets again. Hmm. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were at the point of breaking so that they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats with fish so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, go away from me for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all his companions were completely astounded at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were his partners with Simon Peter. Jesus said to Simon, have no fear. From now on, you will be catching men. After they had brought their boats to land, look at this, they left everything and followed him, becoming his disciples believing and trusting in him and following his example. Can the church say amen? amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm ready to launch. Ready to launch. Oh, no, that was the wrong neighbor. Try the other neighbor and say, I'm ready to launch. Ready to launch. Give God praise all over the building. Come on, give God glory. Um. This particular word comes at a uh, critical time, where it comes at a time and a season where one season is about to come to an end and another in the natural is about to begin. Uh, and, and it's important uh, at this particular time of the year 
that we begin to prepare ourselves for what's next. I've often said that because of how you behave in this current season kind of dictates how the next season occurs or how it how how beneficial it will be sometimes we get to the point where we are so dramatically affected by what's going on right now that we don't uh, aren't able excuse me to embrace what god has next uh, i have to offer this to you off the bat that the, the lord does have a next in store for you you have to understand that and then some of you are clapping with a little bit of hesitancy, but because you have heard that before. But it's important to understand that even in the natural realm, in the business realm, in the, uh, in, in the world at large, what this time of year represents. We're about to go into September. And September, I know everybody, we get excited about August being the eighth month and it'd be the month of new beginnings. But September now, amen, dictates that it is in the business world, around the world, all kinds of businesses and, and our folks look at September as the beginning of the new year. Amen. Oh, yeah. See, you know, some of y'all saying, Pastor, that don't make no sense. Uh, think back, if you will, back, back when we used to have television seasons. Y'all didn't catch that. When we used to have television seasons, amen, you had, uh, you had understood that people launched new products in, and they still do launch new products in September. I remember as a child, amen, uh, the fall season would start in September. A lot of things would be happening in September. We'd be going back to school and all these things. And so it was a, new, it was a time of newness. It was a time where brand new things were starting, but they would launch a fall season, the TV guide, amen, there's a thing you used to call a TV guide that would come to your house every week to tell you what was coming on TV. They would have little articles and stuff in it as well, but but they would have the fall preview issue. Y'all ain't hearing me. They would, it would be thicker than your normal weekly TV guide because they were going to tell you about all the new shows that were going to come on TV. See, it's different now because we don't have seasons anymore. They could just decide. I mean, it used to be, oh, let me say it like this. I can talk to y'all a little while. Amen. It used to be like that in music as well. A lot of times artists would wait either to the beginning of summer. I mean, the Isley Brothers were good for having a new jam every summer. They would have to have a new jam every summer. Amen. Marvin Gaye was good at that as well. But then sometimes if they didn't do it for summer, they would do it in the fall. They would say, okay, we're getting you ready because the holidays are going to be coming and the turn of the year. Y'all ain't hear me? But even even more importantly, as a child, I remembered, amen, uh, that they would, have the, they would do even the cartoons like that. They would try to have, they would have a fall preview of the cartoons. They would play it on a, on a Friday night. Uh, the Friday night before the fall season would start, uh, they would try to give you an update about the cartoons that were coming. Y'all ain't gonna hear me see. Some of y'all don't understand what cartoons are. Amen. Anymore. Well, I, I understand. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm showing my age, but it's all good. It means I know something. But what happened was they would show you and we would be excited. Me and my brothers and my sister would all be excited. We'd crowd around to see what the new shows were. Oh, I'm going to watch that. I remember one year it was a Jackson 5 cartoon was coming on. Y'all ain't going to hear me. Amen. And we could be, um, our heads almost exploded because the Jackson 5 had a TV show, had a, had a cartoon that we could tune in every week and see the adventures of Michael Marlin, Tito, Jermaine, Jackie, and Randy, amen, uh, amen, and we, and we had all of them, uh, but we were excited about what was going on, and so they would, they would always roll those out in the fall, uh, and so the Lord is telling us, even now, on a serious note, uh, that I'm about to roll out some blessings for you at the end of this year, hallelujah. So you can't look at this current season that you're in or that the one that you just came out of as, as so traumatic that you can't function. You can't look at it like, well, I'm still trying to get over that. But here's the problem with this. Even as good as the next season is about to be, I mean, we can't ignore the fact that we are somewhat frustrated in the middle of this one. Hallelujah. You have tried some things and you've made it to the end of this particular season. 
season and this has made it been a, a tough summer for some of us but the Lord is saying yeah I got you but it is coming but now sometimes I'm so frustrated that I'm washing my nets I'm putting up some stuff I'm I'm trying to clear out some issues and I don't know I thought it was gonna happen in June I thought it was gonna happen in July and I sure enough thought the month of new beginnings was gonna launch me right into what God has for me but now I realize that I'm sitting here I'm toiling all night I'm gonna talk to some folks today that have been wrestling with some things that have been struggling with some things and find themselves a little frustrated at the end of the summer amen oh God help me maybe this was the wrong group to preach this one too amen you find yourself because we don't usually want to admit that we are somewhat frustrated we usually try to be pretty good at playing stuff off amen we know when to throw our hand up we know when to look deep we know when amen to act like we got a little shout going on we we know when to how to dress ourselves up and and pretend like everything is okay but there are times that we come in and out of these doors week after week frustrated hallelujah because I haven't caught anything yet I haven't got what I'm supposed to get I haven't received my blessing yet I got a little something I thought it was gonna happen but it didn't happen the way I wanted it to and I'm a little frustrated lay your hand on somebody say yeah me too me too me too Hallelujah. I'm also a little frustrated. But the Lord says, I want you to understand how I can change everything at a moment's notice. You were designed, hear me, and I think that's going to be my next book, amen, but you were designed to thrive in every season. You were not designed just to have one good season, a bad season, another bad season, then one good season. No, the Lord said, you're supposed to be able to adjust and adapt and grow and thrive in every season single season that happens in your life so all of them are yours hallelujah okay okay uh, I got my work to do but understand what was going on this is Jesus's early ministry amen one thing you'll note and you say well pastor and I'll talk about it in a moment didn't Peter and them already know Jesus yes they did but understand there is a certain thing when the Lord introduces himself to you amen and then he brings himself back into your life because he's going to take you to another level hallelujah there's another level level of engagement that the Lord is calling for and many of us are stuck in our current season because we haven't elevated our level of engagement and connection with Jesus Christ Holly we gathered a whole lot of stuff we know some stuff about him but we're not really into him as much as we're going to have to be if we're going to succeed where God is about to take us uh, amen I got my work cut out for me that's all right I came ready to work today but understand Jesus Jesus had been doing great miracles. He had been moving, amen, with great power in, in launching his earthly ministry. Amen. He had been through temptation from the devil. He had been rejected, amen, in the synagogue at Nazareth. And now here he is. But all along the way, he's beginning to do miracles, signs, and wonders. Hallelujah. He is healing folks. He's casting out demons. He is moving, amen, with great anointing and great power. Amen. He's delivering everybody he comes in contact with. He is the personification of the power of God. In other words, I am God manifest in the flesh. And as I move, everything changes. Hallelujah. Look at someone say, everything changes. When Jesus is on the scene, as he is on the scene, the blind are had their eyes opened up. Amen. The lame are beginning to walk. Folks that have withered hands are beginning to have their hands, amen, healed. They're being restored. They're being renewed. And everywhere he goes, he's saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hallelujah. Uh, he's trying to get them ready uh, to understand that there's something going on. Uh, there's a shift occurring. Uh, amen. Lean on someone say, I feel a shift occurring. Uh, I don't know what exactly is about to happen in my life, uh, but I feel something. Is there anybody? Am, am I just talking to myself? Uh, is there anybody that knows there's something? Uh, you're not sure. You know that something is happening. Uh, you want to be a part of this next move of God. Uh, someone's just singing like this songs in. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. I want to be a part of it. Open your mouth if you want to be a part of this next move. 
Oh, uh, but watch it. Uh, as he's healing many, as he's going, uh, he is healing Simon, even healed Peter's even mother in law. Uh, healed her, and, and, and she had a great fever. Uh, and he cast them, and he, he rebuked the fever. Uh, and she got up and began to minister to them. Uh, so they're, as they're moving, as they're going throughout, uh, you realize that they, he has, an, uh, he knows Simon Peter. Uh, uh, let me put it to you this way. Uh, in the Gospel of St. John, uh, you'll find that John was talking about John the Baptist. Uh, he goes into great detail about his ministry. Uh, but John the Baptist, and John the Baptist, uh, I mean, as I said last week, uh, was so prolific in everything that he did. Uh, was, but he was so, uh, I mean, uh, such a dynamic personality. Uh, but now he was transforming lives. Uh, I mean, by his sheer power uh, and his zeal and his energy, uh, folks were being baptized. Uh, and in fact, Peter, I Amen, mean, James, John, Andrew were all disciples of John the Baptist. But in the book of St. John, there came a moment where Damon John was saying, Amen, if you all think I'm something, Amen, the one coming after me is greater than I am. He said, I'm not even worthy to lace up his sandals. He's coming on the scene. And what he tells him is, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. And we see that and we hear that as a declaration. But that was a literal thing that happened. Jesus was walking and John said, there he is, right there. He pointed them to Jesus Christ and said, my disciples, there he is. There is the Savior of the world. There is the Lamb of God. And what he was telling them is, you need to stop following me. And you need to go to his church. You need to, amen, tap into him. And so Andrew and John, amen, were walking, amen, they saw Jesus. And John had pointed them out. And they said, amen, Lord, we start, they started following Jesus. They started low-key stalking him. They were going with him where he was. Jesus, after a while, turned and said, What are you all looking for? What are you seeking? And they said, Lord, we want to know, where do you live? Where do you abide? He said, come on. And she grabbed it in his hand and said, Jesus wants to take you where he is. He wants to take you to where he is. He said, come on and see. And as they began to spend the night with him, they hung out with Jesus. They went back, Andrew went back, and told his brother Peter, Simon Peter, if you will, we have found the Messiah. We have found Jesus. Shake your neighbors and say, neighbor, I found him. I found the one who my soul loves. I found the one who will change your life. I found somebody that's gonna change everything I found see I, I don't know I don't know if y'all found him yet but watch this after he came he brought Peter to Jesus and of course James I mean John brought James and here they had an encounter they met Jesus Jesus declared some things about Simon Peter and then they moved on back to their regular everyday life Please catch that. He went back to just normal. They went back to work as fishermen because they had their own business. James and John were partners with Andrew and Peter in the fishing business. And understand, the fishermen in that day could make more than the average salary. They made an above average salary. Amen. As fishermen, these were men that were not youngsters. They were they were groomed in this, and they knew what they were doing. I'm preaching in a second. They knew exactly what they were doing because sometimes the Lord will meet you but you still go back to your everyday life. But the Lord says in this next season I'm about to take you to another level. Hallelujah. Understand what's happening. Amen. Jesus is still going about doing miracles. Peter, James, John, and Andrew are all out doing their normal job. They have met the Lord. Amen. They've been 
been amen converted but there's about to be another change that happens in their life look at someone say this next season amen god's gonna change you from the inside out he's gonna do something for you spiritually before he does it naturally open your mouth and let me hear you uh, i gotta get to my chest understand as he has begun to minister he's preaching in synagogues jesus is he comes to a point where as he's doing these miracles signs and wonders the multitude is following him and it got to the point where as he goes down by the sea of galilee he goes down there and the crowd is pressing on him the crowd is pushing him and he says i need some space between me and the crowd otherwise they're gonna push me right into this lake but understand he sees these two boats please catch this catch the imagery of it it was early in the day but these two these fishermen were done for the night oh god help me he came upon some people that had reached their limit that were finished oh look at your neighbor and say neighbor i'm done i'm done oh y'all ain't talking i wish i had a church in here look at someone say neighbor i'm good i'm done and what they were doing was these two boats were sitting by the lake and the fishermen were on the side washing out their drag nets please understand about these nets these nets were used to go in between two boats and drag along amen the bottom of the deeper areas of the water and what it would do it would pull up a whole lot of stuff y'all ain't hearing me in here amen you drug your net all summer long and you pulled up a lot of junk yeah, but you didn't get what you wanted shake somebody's hands and say I got something but it ain't what I wanted I got some things but it wasn't what I wanted I got something oh that ain't no good and the Lord said while you're sitting here amen cleaning out your net the Lord said this last season that you're in was a season of cleaning out some stuff of straightening up some stuff I'm picking up no no that ain't no, I can't use that. No, I can't. No, I can't use Y'all ain't going to help me. Look at your name and go like this. No, I can't use it. Amen. They ask you, can you? No, I can't. I can't eat that. I can't use that. That ain't going to bless me. And the Lord said, clean it out. You're cleaning out your net and you're finished. Tell somebody, say, I'm done. I'll try again tomorrow oh y'all gonna hear me i'm done for the day god help me i'll try this again some of you say pastor i'm coming to your church for the last sunday i tried it two weeks in a row you're all right i'm gonna come in here on this last sunday in august and i'm gonna give it one more shot and the lord says i just want to sit in your boat Look at someone say, keep doing what you're doing. But Jesus is in your boat. Hallelujah. Look at someone say, keep on cleaning up your life. But Jesus is in your boat, though. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Look at someone say, but he's sitting in my boat. And he's teaching. See, that's what the enemy doesn't want you to have. He doesn't want you to hear the word of God. But lay your hand on somebody say, I would leave. But he's sitting in my boat right now. I wish I had a church in here. I, I would walk away. But he's sitting in my boat. I would give up. But he's sitting in my boat. And I can't leave. Open your mouth and let me hear you shout glory. Watch. It said that he began to teach he asked simon thrust out a little bit from the land so that way and see jesus is so smart because he didn't have no amplifier they didn't have no microphone so what he was going to do was use the flow of the tide to carry his word to the multitude Shake somebody says, you better get in the flow. And see, the enemy doesn't want you to hear 
the word of God. Because if you hear the word of God, your faith is going to increase. How you think is going to change. And when how you think begins to change, what you say begins to change. And what you say begins to change, then how you walk is going to change. Oh, Jesus. Watch this. So as he's sitting here and he's hearing Jesus, the word go forth. He's hearing the word teach the word. And as he hears the word teach the word, he's still cleaning his net. You put it away, junk. You throw stuff away. Shakes my hand and say, I heard his word while I made some changes in my life. See, it's quiet. I know, I know, I know, I know. You had to clean out some stuff. But meanwhile, mm, that was a good word right there. Oh, yeah, I heard that. Mm -hmm. So he's cleaning, and Jesus is teaching. When he's finished, when the Bible study is over, he says, hey, amen, let's go to the deep water. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, let's go to the deep water. Oh, no, 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 that was the wrong neighbor. Look at neighbors and try it like this. Say, neighbor, let's go get that blessing you've been waiting on. Y'all see y'all missed it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, let's go get that blessing that you're frustrated about, that you're worried about, that you've been crying about. Let's go get it now. Because I know where it is. The blessing ain't on the shore, honey. The blessing is in the deep. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Watch this. He says, and Simon Peter, being Simon Peter, is not afraid to say what's on his mind. He says, excuse me, uh, I know you're a great teacher, love the Bible study. And I appreciate you, Reverend. He says, but this fishing thing is what I do. It's kind of like my thing. He says, we have toiled all night and taken nothing. Please catch that. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've toiled all summer and taken nothing. What, when he is expressing is, he's frustrated. Look at someone and say, I've had a frustrating season. Oh, God, help me. See, see, how, see how folks are scared to shout on that? You know you, you sitting up in here trying so hard to play it off. Look at us and say, relax, we all struggling. Oh, uh, come on, look at y'all and say, neighbor, we all had a frustrating summer. So ain't no sense of you sitting up in there trying to save face. He said, he said, Lord, we didn't toil all night and taken nothing. But look at this. See, here's what you got to do after you've expressed what a frustrating night you've had. Where you were expecting some things to happen. You pulled, because when you drag the net, you feel something. Right? The net's, woo, uh oh, uh oh, I think we got it. This is going to be a good one. And you pull up, and it's an old shoe. You pull up the net. And there was an old friend you used to have. And look at your neighbor and say, didn't I throw that back like? <laughs> oh, crazy, crazy fish is still alive. How you get back in my, oh, y'all going to help me. How you get back in my boat? Touch your neighbor and say, Deborah Cox said, how did you get here? Nobody's supposed to. 
but I digress. <laughs> How you end up with, and it's frustrating because there were Sundays you shouted on stuff. And you said, it's mine. And then you pull up and it was a tire. It was an old, what? It was a bunch of debris, a bunch of junk. I can't, I can't eat that. I can't sell that. I can't use that. That ain't going to bless me. So then he says, he said, but, but you got to have this in your spirit. Touch me, I said, get a nevertheless in your spirit. Because when Jesus is talking, you got to have a nevertheless. And if you don't know what nevertheless means, it's a, but anyway. Look at someone get a, but anyway, in your spirit, I'm going to do it anyway. He says, nevertheless, he says, I just want you to know, we, we've done this all night. Because see, that's how they fish. They fish in the wee hours of the morning, before it was even daylight. Because fish ain't biting or jumping in your net all the time. And so he says, I... We've toiled all night. And I want the folks in here that aren't afraid to admit, I've toiled all night. I've been, I've been messing with this a long time. I've been trying to fix this a long time. I've been looking for that breakthrough. I shouted it a long time. And now I'm frustrated, but I got a nevertheless. See, faith, after you've heard the word, will make you go ahead and try another time. And he says, at your word, we're going to try this again. I don't, and I, I'm going to watch, watch what he's saying. What we're going to do is we're going to move where you want us to move. Oh, God. I'm, we're gonna, I'm going to reposition myself at your word. I'm going, here it is, where you want me to go. Jesus said, I know you want to be blessed right here. He said, but your blessing's in the deep. Shakespeare says, you're going to have to go, go get this one. you got to go get you see, See, that's why that, that old patty cake praise, that's shallow. That little thank you, Jesus, is shallow. That little hit and miss coming to church, that's shallow. He said, but the little giving a little bit every now and then, that's shallow. He said, you got to get to the deep. Wait, wait, wait. You got to really worship me. You got to worship me in your giving. So he said, the, the, the fish are out in the deep, Doc. And Peter says, at your word. See, my faith, love, after hearing you teach and knowing what I know about you, I'm going to go ahead and do it because you said so. Hallelujah. I'm going to do it this time because you said so. I just cleaned my nets. But I'm going to do it this time. As you're standing. Watch this. He says, at your word. When they get out there to the deep and they drop those nets, it blew everybody's mind. How are you catching fish in the middle of the day when the sun is up and they can see the dragnet? But when you're doing it at the word of the Lord, see, hearing from God is everything. Hearing his voice every day is critical. It's critical. L listen, listen to me. See, we're good at, at kind of the Lord blessing us, and then we take it from here. I got it. I'm good. One of the most frustrating things is when you know somebody, when you're telling someone something, and they stop you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hate that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at this, I say, don't, don't give me no yeah, yeah, yeah. When I, it's, it, it's really frustrating. Or I got it, I got it, yeah, 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 I know. 
That yeah, 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 I know. They always got to say yeah, yeah, yeah so fast. Turn somebody and say, eliminate that fast yeah, yeah, yeah. Because see, what we do is, it's like Jesus is telling us where we got to go, what we got to do. We're like, yeah, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it. Because we start feeling the little first inkling of the blessing. So we try to cut him off. And the Lord's like, oh, oh. And then when we mess up, then we're like, Jesus, I was going to tell you. But since you yeah, yeah, yeah me. But Peter and all of the disciples realized something that day. As they pulled the fish, it was so many that their net was, start, was straining about to break. Tell somebody, say, God's got a net breaking, boat sinking, blessing for you. But it's in the deep, though. It's out here. He has to call his partners. Hey, y'all, come. You see me out here struggling. Look at this. The blessing was so great. He said, I need my friends to come help me bring this blessing in. Some of y'all don't see it. Lay your hand on somebody and say, you're going to be blessed because you're hanging with me. And just because I like you, I'm going to hook you up too. See, as you grab those hands, what he did was he called them over and then watch this. And their boat began to sink. So this blessing is going to affect everybody. That's why we got to get on board. Quit sitting on the shore. Because I understand there were some folks that were on the shore watching this whole thing. And they saw the miracle. And the miracle was so incredible that Peter did like Isaiah had done. It's like, you know, get away from me. I'm, I'm, I'm a sinful man. He said, do you understand how amazing that was for people that had fished all night? And then all of a sudden, because Jesus is in your boat, and he goes, and you go at his word, now your boat is sinking with fish. And here's the thing. Do you understand what happens when you really let go of everything? That's what we're talking about, praise. But see, from that day, Peter, James, John, and Andrew were like, you know, we're out of fishing business. Y'all didn't hear me. It said they left everything. So in other words, we retire. We, we, we quit. I'm not, and I'm not, please, please, don't quit. <laughs> what I'm saying is they were ready because of what God had done for them. They were ready to make a shift in their life. They left everything. It was to the point where Peter, and Peter didn't forget it. Sometime later when the rich young ruler had come and was asking Jesus about you know, inheriting eternal life, and Jesus said, it's going to be hard for the rich to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Peter and said, who's going to be saved then? He said, with, with, with men it's impossible, but not with God. He said, there's nobody that's left houses, mothers, wives, everything. To follow me. Peter said, we left everything. Peter said, I walked away from a lucrative fishing business to follow you. Think about that. He said, ain't nobody, and see, that's why you, that's what we, we, we trip out on. We think because we walk away that now we're going to have, we're going we to step down and have less. There's no man no woman that has made a commitment to Jesus, that has left stuff, that doesn't love the stuff more than they love Jesus. That's what he's really saying. You got to leave, folk. You got to let go of everything but him. He said, if you walk away, he's going to have more in this life and in the life to come. See, that's, that, see it takes faith, though. See, 
It takes faith. Squeeze that hand. Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your word. And Lord, some of us in here now are ready to launch. We're ready. We have our nevertheless. The Lord, the things we've experienced in this season were not so overwhelming that they've diminished our faith or diminished our hope or our expectation that you're going to bless. Lord, give us the word to launch into the deep. Lord, sit in some of our boats and let your word go forth. And then give us a command to move where you want us to move. Lord, even if we're frustrated and we're done, at your word, Lord, we'll let the nets down again. We'll do it again. We'll try it again. Lord, we won't walk away. We won't give up. We won't get frustrated with church. We won't get frustrated with you because it doesn't happen on our timetable. Lord, you know what our bank accounts say. You know what's due. Hallelujah. You know what we need. So, Lord, we thank you for choosing our boat. Ah, oh, glory. Thank you for occupying our space. And Lord, we're ready to launch. Lift those hands. Lord, we're ready to move where you want us to move. You have our attention now, Lord. And we're obedient. Oh, come on, say it. I'll be obedient now. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God praise. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, open your mouth. Somebody needs to step out here right now and say, you know what, I need to make a change in my life. Somebody needs to make a change in their life. And say, you know, I may feel like a sinful man, a sinful woman. Jesus says, no, it ain't bothering me. I know who you are. And some of us, because we see a demonstration of the power of God, we say, I got to get away from it. But no, the Lord says, I'm going to do something different for you. I'm about to change your job. I'm going to change your assignment. I'm about to change your life. Hallelujah. Someone told me that the other day. They said, are you ready for your life to change? <laughs> And I hadn't really thought about it. I said, yeah, I guess I am. I'm ready. Tell somebody, I'm ready. I'm ready. You got to be ready for your life to change. Somebody may need to be baptized today. Somebody may need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Today is a good day. Somebody may need to dedicate their life, rededicate their life to the Lord. So, you know, I've toiled all night. I'm tired. I'm worn out. I'm exhausted. But I'm ready to launch out. Give God praise all over the building. Lord, if I find favor in your sight. Lord, please hear my heart's cry. I'm desperately waiting to be where you are. I'd cross the hottest desert. I'd travel near or far. For your glory, I will do anything just to 
see you to behold you as my king for your glory i will do anything just to see my king Lord if I find favor in your sight Lord please hear my heart's cry I'm desperately waiting to be where you are I'd cross the hottest desert I travel near or far for your glory I will do anything just to see you to behold you as Just to see you, to behold you as my king for your glory. Hallelujah! I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. And we're grateful. I wanna be where Taylor wants to be baptized in Jesus' name today. Isn't God good? Hallelujah. Oh, come on, give God praise. Oh, we should get happier about that than that. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you, ministry team. Thank you. Do me a favor, real quick. Grab somebody and just tell them, launch out. Nah, you didn't. I mean, pull them a little bit. You got to pull them a little bit and say, launch out now. Come on. Don't be one of those folks that are sitting on the shore watching other folks be blessed. It's a blessing for you. And I'm not, I'm not talking, preaching on you. I'm preaching to myself as I preach to you. There's something greater for all of us. Amen. Amen. I wish I had some folks that believed it. There's something greater for all of us. Hallelujah. Give God praise. God bless you, everybody. Before we receive our offering, we want to make a few announcements. Um, tomorrow at our Palmdale Bible study, uh, it will, we'll, we'll be having our Palmdale Bible study tomorrow at our Palmdale location at 7.30. We're continuing the series, We Are One. Amen. The Lord is blessing us uh, tremendously. Uh, uh, in this series, if you can't be here, be there tomorrow. You can be here on Tuesday night at 7.30 following prayer, which is at 7 p.m. Now, if you really are going to go to the deep, you might want to throw a Bible study or two in there. You will notice that Jesus didn't tell Peter to go through the deep until after he had finished teaching. Sometimes we don't know when to go to the deep because we ain't heard Bible study. 
Because if you don't know no instructions, you're just going by what you know. Or you're going by what somebody else told you. I ain't going to repeat, preach it, but I'm just saying. So you're going to have to get some word in you if you're going to be able to move into the things in this next season that God has for you. So um, Tuesday night at 7.30, if you can't be here in person, please check it out on our live stream on my Facebook page or also on the Spirit and Life Ministry page, spiritandlifeministries.com, spiritandlifeministries.com. You can, uh, uh, I, w I was going to do an experiment. You can catch us there, but I was going to do a little experiment. I did it in Palmdale, and, you know, they got shook a little bit. The non-iPhone uh, users. Because I airdropped a little a blessing to them. Yeah, I airdropped a blessing about a new way to, for you to become an MVP of Spirit and Life Ministries. But they weren't ready. And then the folks that had non-apostolic phones. They were scrambling trying to figure out. But anyway, we do have a new thing that we can, uh, a new way for you to give and support Spirit in Life. And uh, you can give online at Spirit in Life Ministries. Excuse me. Go to Facebook Me. No, excuse, what am I saying? What am I saying? PayPal dot me forward slash spirit and life and you can give right from your seat amen you don't even have to come up here you can just give right from your seat if you'd like amen i ain't gonna matter with you this week but i i do want to let y'all check that out with paypal dot me forward slash spirit and life we invite you to become a ministry verified partner with Spirit and Life Ministries. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Uh, we have some awesome things that are in store for you. But, but if you'd like to give uh, electronically, we're going to have that available for you in a moment um, with your cards. But also you can give, you can still give like, you know, actual money. That works too. Amen. As you're standing. Huh? Real cash. Yeah, actual cash. Yes. Change is cool, but not so much. But, but, but cash is great, and checks and all that good stuff. Hold that offering up in the air. Somebody, how many of y'all need a, a large catch financially? Amen. Y'all, amen. We appreciate everybody that's giving and supporting this ministry. Wave it in the air and say, Lord, I thank you for enlarging my catch for a miraculous catch. In Jesus' name, amen. You're in the hands of the ushers and the deacons. Please turn those cards in. I want to pray for you this week. We've come to lift our hands and give him glory. We've come to lift our hands and give him praise. If you want to give electronically, see the birthday girl, Sister Carla, down front here, and she will be able to bless you. To lift our hands and give him glory. We've come to lift our hands and give him praise. We've come to lift our hands and give him glory. We've come to lift our hands and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. We've come to lift our hands and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. We've come to lift our hands and give him praise. We've come to clap our hands and send up Judah. We've come to clap our hands and give him praise. Come on, sing it again. We've come to clap our hands and send up Judah. 
come to clap our hands and give him praise. We've come to clap our hands and send up Judah. We've come to clap our hands and give him praise. We've come to clap our hands and send up Judah. We've come to clap our hands and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. We've come to clap our hands and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. We've come to clap our hands and give him praise. We've come to do our dance and magnify him. We've come to do our dance and give him praise. Come to do our dance and magnify him. God bless you. We've come to do our dance. Ready for the baptism. Point your hands up this way. Come on, give him glory. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. God bless you. Have a blessing with everybody. Hallelujah. Hey, say, Lord, we love you. 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 